What embarrassing moment did you not stop someone from doing because you wanted to see what happened instead? Caught a strawberry grouper on a charter boat once. Was there with my dad. The guy running the charter tells me that the fish gets its name from its taste and that if you lick it, the fish tastes like a strawberry. Well, I'll save you the time it takes to catch and lick a strawberry grouper because it tastes like salt water, scales and gullibility. In Denmark there's a fish called a gurkafisk, cucumber fish. The guide said that it got its name from its smell. So on a dare I bit a live one in half and it actually did taste like cucumber. This was back in middle when I was in 8th grade. I had gym which was a mixture of 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. The coach was talking to us for a while and after told us to change into our gym clothes. Out of the corner of my eye I saw a kid get up and start to strip. He had taken off his shirt and it was only till he started working on his pants did the coach yell in the locker rooms I'm pretty sure that none of the students were gonna say anything. I was sitting in a car in a Home Depot parking lot watching these two guys tie drywall to the top of their car. They were running the rope through the driver and passenger side window, with the door closed. So, I watched, of course they got done, went to open the doors, and couldn't open them. They had to jump through the window. One of the guys was a short little fat guy. He hopped into the window and got stuck. I could only see the butt end as he struggled to get in. The thought of him wedged in the window kicking his feet to get in still cracks me up. Oh bother. Coworker, let's call him John, got a Raspberry Pi delivered to the office and was talking about it at lunch. Other coworker, let's call him Jim, legit thought he was talking about dessert. He thought it strange that a pie would be delivered by mail, but was still excited to try it. Everybody except Jim knew that it was the mini computer, not a pie, but John still kept up the ruse. We all still wanted to see the pie anyways, so we all went back to John's office for the unboxing. Jim even showed up with disposable plates and cutlery. The reveal was pretty hilarious. That's really adorable, actually. Not long ago I spent 9 months on an aircraft carrier for deployment. About 6 months and the days were all looking the same so anything for a laugh was welcome. One afternoon I visited a bathroom near my workstation to find a friend, and the walls and ceiling, dripping wet. He said the toilet had exploded in his face when he flushed it. Now, it's not uncommon for pipes to break and I had a small chuckle at his misfortune. It wouldn't even have been memorable had it ended there. A while later I returned, trying to stay hydrated, and someone was in the stall mopping the place up. Again, nothing memorable. I take care of my business and leave but think wow they fixed that quickly. Back again. After a quick drain I'm washing my hands and see someone I don't really know enter the stall in question through the mirror. At this point it dawns on me the average repair time for issues like this is usually weeks, not hours. I expected to see tape labeling the stall secured but here was this guy, taking a leak in a mopped dry stall. The thought to warn him crosses my mind. But I just have to know. I need this. I take a step to my left as the trickle stops. The metal clink of the handle is immediately followed by the rush of a fire hose at full blast. Water sprays clear out onto the mirror I had been looking through, against the stall walls and pounds against the ceiling. When the blast ends, and the bottom of the stall looks like waterfall, I hear soggy boots slowly turn around with a squishy slosh and out steps a dripping marine in a drenched uniform. We exchanged surprised glances as I suppress my laughter. To break the silence he says well, that sucked, and slowly sloshed out of the bathroom. Could have stopped it, but it made my day week month deployment. Well they fixed that quickly is a statement never heard when it comes to ship maintenance. My boss and I were having a video conference with a colleague who was working from home. About 10 minutes in, he bumps his laptop reaching for a new microphone he wanted to show us. And the webcam moves and focuses right in on his crotch, revealing that he is wearing only a pair of bright blue men's bikini underwear. My boss and I look at each other, ready to bust out laughing, but we remain silent. Center screen full detail crotch shot for a good 15 seconds before he notices. He was less embarrassed than I thought he would be, saying oops. So anyway, here's this cool new microphone I got. That wasn't an accident. I work in youth corrections. The facility I'm in has a pool table, and if the guys are doing good they can play. There is a bench in that pool room that is ridiculously poorly designed. If you don't sit dead center it will tip you off to either side. 
There is an unspoken rule between staff and veteran cadets that we never inform new residents or staff of that bench. It's hilarious. That was more wholesome than I was expecting given the start of that post. I had a wonderful moment of karma. Worked at a restaurant where the owner's son was a manager and an butthole. One day he ripped the crap out of his pants and didn't know his butt was hanging out. No one among the staff of about 20 people told the bastard. When he finally realized he was livid as he had been walking through the dining room. When asked why none of us said anything someone piped up and said you said staring at butts was sexual harassment and we could be fired. Armalishia's compliance. There's nothing better than working in a shop and watching one of the office people try to use a pallet jack for the first time. It's always gold. Lady walking out of the bathroom with toilet paper on her foot. I went to say something and she gave me a disgusting look. So I just let her keep walking. This one is reversed as it was my friend laughing maniacally while it happened to me. My college roommate used to work at this chicken restaurant called Chicken Express. We would go eat at a location close to campus. This was not the location that he actually worked at. Pretty often cause it's delicious. So one time he tells me. Hey man when you order the tenders make sure you say shibby shibby after your order. That's the code to tell them you work at Chicken E and they'll hook you up with like 20 tenders. Maybe it was wishful thinking or just plain stupidity. But I totally believed him. We drove through the drive through and he was in the back seat. The conversation with the employee went like this. Um I'll have two number ones with mashed potatoes. Shibby shibby. Okay two number ones with mashed potatoes and a what was the last thing? Comma shibby shibby. Having trouble hearing you. A what now? Comma shibby. Shib. Bye. So I have no idea what you're trying to say. Do you wanna pull around? At which point I look back and see my friend almost turning blue from trying to hold his laughter in. He totally lost it and I just drove off. Mayo I was with this girl who told me she knew the people at MCD and to tell them I knew her and they'll hook me up. I went through drive through and was like hey can I get one apple pie I know Julie and the guy was like that's cool that will be 1.08 inches. I was at a casino buffet once standing in the sushi section waiting for my turn. This old white lady cuts the line and takes a huge dollop of wasabi and puts it on her plate full of Mexican food. I can only assume she thought it was guacamole, which for some reason, they kept next to sushi. In the moment, I felt she deserved what was coming to her. Ah, yes, the good old green tea ice cream. It happened in high school while watching a educational movie. We were two classes tucked into a small classroom to watch it together. So people had to sit on the desks as there wasn't enough chairs. I sat next to my friend's girlfriend on a desk, with my friend on a chair in front of us. She strokes her hand through his his hair. He takes his hand behind his back, and proceeds to stroke her leg. Only thing was, it was my leg. I poked his girlfriend to let her know what was going on. We both knew what had to be done without uttering the words. We let this go on for a good 5 minutes, constantly fighting the urge to laugh out loud. Then I slowly pulled my trouser leg up. He stroked my very furry leg for about half a second before he realized something was very wrong. I'll never forget his face when he turned around to see what was going on. Comma educational movie. This past weekend, I was in the car going back home after a weekend trip to Boston with my roommate. He's a really amazing dude, but he's not that great of a driver. He gets lost all the time. He drives slow, and he's just kind of oblivious. Yet for various reasons he was the driver for this trip. He got really mad at me for trying to assume full responsibility of navigation. I said fine and shut up. Sure enough about 15 minutes later he zoned out and we missed the exits to get off the mass turnpike and immediately ended up in like an extra half hour of traffic trying to turn around. I saw him zone out. I saw him make no effort to get into the right lane and as soon as we missed it I calmly pointed it out. He was very embarrassed and mad at himself. So you got lost and purposely went the wrong way to see your friend get lost Lomfeo that's dedication. I went out to eat at Hibachi with my family. I think I was 10 or 11 at the time. In addition to giving us sauce trays to dip our food into, they also gave us shaved ginger and a dollop of wasabi. My grandpa grew up during the Great Depression so he developed a habit of always cleaning his plate. So as he finished his meal he moved his attention to the side dish. 
no one else seemed to notice my grandpa staring quizzically at this rather large green lump. Not wanting to waste food he picked the entire thing up to eat it. I could have clearly stopped him as I had been watching him the entire time but I also wanted to see what would happen. Well he about jumped out of his seat spitting the wasabi onto the table and started cursing up a storm. I know it was wrong to do but I still get a little kick out of that memory. Two mildly related things. 1. I used to clean up my plate as a kid because I didn't want the food to feel lonely after I've eaten all of its friends. 2. I knew a friend whose dad was in Nam. He could eat huge spoonfuls of wasabi without tearing up. He said it was because Agent Orange made him lose his sense of smell. Weirdest thing tbh. In high school, I took Algebra 1A and 1B. Math split up into a two year course, instead of one. It got a lot of the lazy kids, I took it because math is harder for me. Anyway, one of the kids in the class was trying to be all cool, how he was doing it, of course, was incredibly dumb. Specifically, he was trying to be a badass by spraying breath spray up his nose. You know, the kind that you spray twice onto your tongue. It should also be stated that I was a complete and utter loser in high school. So he's trying to be all cool, spraying this stuff up his nose. I look at him, and just say Cory, you're supposed to inhale while spraying. Now that his coolness was challenged, he did it, his face turning beet reed, him crying, and slamming his head on the desk in pain for 15 minutes as a result, was worth it. It's moments like these that you could freeze a moment, thaw it in the microwave, and have its delicious gooey center for dinner. My co-worker was known to have a temper in the office and HR had talked to him a number of times about it. Unfortunately, he had a bad day. I normally try to calm him down because he is an alright dude with a wife and young daughter. But he's just a little too tightly wound. Higher ups knew I was friends with him and it started to reflect bad on me. Guilty by association. So he gets a bad call. We were in a claims department. One of his claimants started yelling at him. He starts with mythific in this and that and I'm like, nope, I can't be seen with him during this tantrum. He ends up getting so worked up that he picks up the office fax machine and throws it, nearly hitting a nice older lady. He got walked out like 17 seconds later. I had a friend in college that dared people to kick him in the balls after he'd had too much to drink. We'll call him Dave. Part of his party trick was to keep a straight face the whole time. His success rate had given him a false sense of confidence, so he just kept egging people on. Keep in mind that the ball kickers were usually drunk freshmen who could barely put any power into it. Then one night, he decides to up the ante and ask one of the school athletes in attendance. We'll call him Ricky. I knew Ricky played soccer, and though I'm usually the buzzkill that asks everyone to be doubly sure they really wanna do this, I decided to let Dave go for it. Ricky, who was also completely sober, accepted the challenge. He took a deep breath, pretended like he was readying himself for kickoff and took aim at Dave's package. What unfolded after that moment continues to pull at my heartstrings. The moment that Ricky's foot met Dave's crotch elicited a look of horror from every man in the room. Ricky had taken Dave's dare seriously, and his foot landed with so much force that it was reminiscent of the sound that a boxing glove makes on a bag except with a tiny squish. I was a 19 year old girl, and even I was grabbing my crotch when I heard it. Dave quietly excused himself, while Ricky apologized profusely. After Dave hadn't been seen for a while, I went looking for him and found him lying in a ball on the bathroom floor. He had been there for about half an hour. He looked at me and said I think I need help. Ricky, who was still feeling guilty, was also sober and I asked him to drive us to the hospital. They did the whole 9 yards for Dave, including an ultrasound. I waited outside the room, but I could tell that the ultrasound tech was trying to make small talk. So while he was imaging Dave's balls and shaft, I could hear him talking about a Peter Gabriel album. The doctor said that Ricky's foot hit Dave's crotch with such force that it was as if he had sustained a stab wound to his genitals. He spent the rest of the year with a banana hammock underneath his jeans. The only funny part was that, since he dressed like a generic hipster, he had to buy new pants so they would fit over it. So in college I became friends with this girl who was kind of a world traveler right when I transferred in. She was a part of the international group that welcomed all of the international students and shortly after invited me to her party for all the international students. 
I'm meeting lots of new people and there is a really stunning girl from Italy that I was interested in talking to. My friend encouraged me to go open with Bella Figa when talking with her. Beautiful girl was the meaning. It had Bella in it so I thought what the heck. I make my way to her, introduce myself, and say those magical words. The beautiful Italian girl gave me the most repulsed look and walked away. I turn around and my friend is laughing hysterically. It translates to you have a beautiful pee. To be fair Bella Figa is not beautiful pee. We Italians indeed use Figa when referring to pee. But if you call a person using Bella Figa you are essentially calling her beautiful girl in a very very vulgar way. So if it does make you feel better you are not complimenting her vagina. Source. I am Italian. While waiting for a briefing, a room full of Air Force airmen intentionally sat in every chair other than a damaged one they knew would dip very far back when someone sat in it. I arrived and the room was full. The anticipation was palpable. I already knew about the chair. I thought everyone did. So I sat in the only other one available and realized the last person absent at that point was a generally disliked senior co. A higher up sergeant for those of who you don't know. As a junior and co. I should have taken the initiative to inform said SNCO about the chair when he arrived. And for a second. I was going to tell him. Then I didn't. Haha. <laughs> All the airmen erupted in laughter when it happened and it took every ounce of fortitude for me not to. As well. I was definitely lol on the inside. Though. I'm not proud. Haha. <laughs> I'm not military but even I know you're setting yourself up for a chair force joke. My roommate in college wanted to slide down the hallway on baby oil and threw me a bottle to squirting in the floor. He was trying to show off and was kind of a douche. He starts running before I even put oil on the floor. I could have stopped him but had a let's see how this plays out moment. Did you know Tile will remove skin and hair from a shirtless Italian man? Mamma mia. I let my drunk friend hit on a woman I knew was married, in a bar that the woman's husband owned. While said husband was watching from behind the bar, he got about three words into his hey baby, come here often style pick up line before the husband swooped over and macked on his wife. My friend asked me why I didn't tell him and I told him I figured the ring and the picture of the husband and wife bar owners on the wall should have been enough. Guess not. Years ago I was talking to a very cute girl and I told her how pretty I thought she was. She thanked me but then said she was married and introduced me to her husband that was standing nearby. I laughed and apologized for trying to pick up his wife. He was cool and agreed that she was pretty and no harm in me pointing that out. We're still friends. I had a co-worker whom I shared an office with that always keep a bowl of chocolate wafers on his desk. Since he was a vegan these were baker's chocolate wafers. Now, if you've ever eaten baker's chocolate you know how bad they taste. The dude loved them and would sit and eat them all the time. People would drop by our office to ask for help on something and see this bowl of chocolate just sitting there. Some would ask if they could have some yeah, he doesn't mind. Others would just grab quick handful and pop them in their mouths. The looks on their faces was always hilarious. When new people would come and other co-workers would pop into chat watch. Teacher in class reading the review questions from of the end of the textbook chapter. One guy was sort of falling asleep on left side of the room. The teacher loved calling on people he knew weren't paying attention. So he calls on him to answer. I don't remember what the question was. The guy jumps up in his seat and mumbles to his friend sitting behind him asking what the answer is since he obviously didn't even hear the question. Without hesitation his friend whispers, answer is B. Clitoris. And as fast as he can he yells out B. Clitoris. And once he realizes what he just said sinks lower in his chair than I thought possible and turns fire engine red. All while swearing at his friend behind him. I laughed so hard I cried. The teacher just looked at him and pretended he didn't hear his answer and asked him to give it again. Which he obviously by then figured out what the actual multiple choice options were and gave one of those. We knew his friend was going to give him the wrong answer and man am I glad everyone let it happen. Was drinking in a cheap dive bar. Music was playing. And there was a drunk guy dancing around by himself in the dance floor area. Through sheer harmless drunken charm. He enticed a woman to come dance with him. As they were dancing, drunk guy's pants just fall down of their own volition. All the way to his ankles. No underwear. He just keeps dancing. She doesn't notice. I drink my beer. And wait. 
Suddenly, she notices and gets this strange deer in the headlights look on her face as she struggles to comprehend what the frick is going on. She yells an obscenity at him, shoves him in the chest, and storms off to the bartender. He looks at me with a sheepish grin, pulls his pants up, and just keeps on dancing. Work in an office. Disgusting middle-aged woman makes a comment to her lightly crowded break room about the hot piece of meat she saw walking the halls. Despite not getting much reaction she continues on, louder and more crudely about how attractive this guy was. At any point, I could have told her that the hot piece of meat was the son of one of the women in the break room. In turning there for the summer, the mom heard every word, waited until she finally stopped, and calmly told her that boy she was discussing was her son. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.